first one. Uh, there are conferences, like more tech conferences, specialized tech conferences, and there are conferences like IDC, which is more of a business and startup one. Right. Do you think it actually makes sense for tech people to go to business conferences and for business people to go to tech conferences? Of course. I mean, we see this bit of antagonism sometimes internally in companies between the business people and the technology people mostly just due to the fact that they don't understand each other well enough. The technical people don't understand some of the trickier business reasons for doing things and the business people don't always understand the limitations of the technology and you see that all the time and you see this conflict and I think if both sides understood the other side a little bit better then some of this conflict and friction would disappear. So yeah, I'm always happy to see business folks in some of my technical talks. So they actually get some idea of what's behind the magic. Uh, and same on the, on the other side, I'm sure some of the business guys would love to see more technology people and more engineers show up and try to understand some of the, the business problems that they're dealing with. Do you see it helping? Yeah. I, no, I, I, I don't see a lot of crossover. I mean, I do mostly technology conferences. I don't see very many business people showing up at these. I think it would be helpful if they did. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, what does it take, do you think, for, uh, for a technical, for, for a technology company? What does it take to form a healthy community of developers? What's the key to it? I think you just need developers who get along with each other. Um, you need to make sure that the personalities maybe match each other somewhat and make sure that you don't cater too much to any one developer, I think. I mean, this idea of rock star developers is often not super productive, I don't think. I think sometimes you really need to work on the team aspect of it and be careful that you don't upset that um, culture or that, that dynamic that you have within the team by bringing in um, a, a superstar developer who doesn't get along with everybody and who really just goes off on his own. So I, I, I think getting a development team to be healthy and, and relaxed and fun, it, it's about making sure the personalities are there and also making sure that they're somewhat insulated from some of the outside stress of running the company. There's a lot of problems that if you, if you give the engineers too much access to those problems or you, you surface those problems at the engineering level, I think you can really remove their focus. You can really distract them. You, you need to make sure that the developers are developing, they're productive and they're working on their things and they should understand the business problems, but they shouldn't be too intimately involved with trying to solve them. And uh, I don't know. I, I think it's a, the, I think you need a strong business side of the company. You need a strong technology side, and you need some sane communications between the two sides. So everyone knows what's going on, but they're also confident that the other side can handle those problems. And that that way, the stress goes away. Uh, do you think uh, PHP is the best, or at least among the best languages for startups for prototyping their uh, of course. I mean, we've seen a lot of startups over the years that started on PHP that are still on PHP today, even after they got super successful. Because of the way PHP scales, basically scales infinitely, horizontally, you can write something tiny running on a single shared server. And with that same code base, five years later, you can be putting out on thousands of servers of your own dedicated servers and you don't have to change the architecture of your code all that much. Um, and it, for that reason, it's a really good choice for a startup, also because it's easy to find developers who know PHP. If you choose a, a fringe language, there's going to be a bit of a learning curve when you bring in new developers. You might be able to find two or three really good developers that know that particular language, but when you need to find developer number 20, number 30, number 40, you might be running into some problems at that point.